Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Crumbs from the Table of Joy is a dramatic play by Lynn Nottage first performed in May 1995 at the Second Stage Theater in New York City. It is both a coming-of-age and a memory play performed from the perspective of Ernestine Crump. Title of the play is inspired from Langston Hughes' poem called Luck which was published in 1947. The title Crumbs from the Table of Joy suggests a state of poverty or limited resources. The word crumbs symbolizes meager offerings, material scarcity, or the struggle for basic necessities. Reflecting the economic challenges faced by the characters striving for a better life in the midst of adversity. On the other hand, the word joy represents the character's desire for happiness, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose, implying that even in the face of economic hardship and personal struggles, the characters are searching for moments of joy in their lives. Therefore, it juxtaposes the idea of joy with crumbs, creating a sense of irony, hinting at the character's pursuit of hopes and aspirations for a better future despite encountering difficulties. The setting is 1950 Brooklyn, New York. It was the time of the start of the Cold War when America was simultaneously grappling with the after-effects of World War II and struggling with high racial tensions that were the precursor to the Civil Rights Movement. It was also the time of the Second Red Scare, which was a frenzied fear of the threat of communism that would topple the United States of America. This panic period was also called McCarthyism, after a Wisconsin senator named Joseph McCarthy. The prologue of the play begins in the fall of 1950. Ernestine Crump, a shy 17-years-old African-American girl, talks to the audience directly, breaking the fourth wall, about how her family was deeply affected by grief. When her mother passed away, her father Godfrey Crump was overwhelmed by sadness and mourned his wife deeply. Then, he came across the teachings of Father Divine, the leader of the Peace Mission Movement. Godfrey was so drawn to Father Divine that he decided to move his family from Florida, which included Ernestine and her 15-year-old sister Amina Crump prone to anxiety attacks, to Brooklyn. However, they soon found out that Father Divine had moved to Philadelphia. The Crump family lives in a small apartment in a mostly Jewish neighborhood. Godfrey works in a bakery to support them. He is very protective of his daughters, especially emphasizing the importance of celibacy, a crucial teaching of Father Divine. On Sundays, he doesn't allow them to listen to the radio. During the week, the sisters find solace in going to the movies. It helps them cope with the loss of their mother and adjust to their new surroundings, as they can freely express their grief by crying while watching emotional stories on the big screen. Ernestine mostly focuses on her studies while Ermina rarely spends time with boys her age. Act 1 begins on a winter day, Godfrey eagerly waits to receive a letter from Father Divine, whom he has written multiple times before. Ermina, excited to find a piece of fabric they ordered in the mail, explains to a stunt Godfrey that Ernestine will use the fabric to make her graduation dress. Ernestine will be the first in the family to complete high school, making Godfrey very proud. He often writes down questions for Father Divine in his notepad, planning to ask them at the Holy Communion banquet that year. Godfrey is overjoyed to find a reply from Father Divine encouraging him to stay strong in tough times and pronounces new names to Godfrey and his daughters. Godfrey Crump becomes Godfrey Goodness, Ernestine becomes Darling Angel, and Ermina becomes Devout Mary. Lillian Green, introducing herself as Ernestine and Ermina's aunt, visits the apartment from Harlem, dressed differently than black women and more like stylish white women. She tells her niece that looking better than white women is her way of battling racism. A surprised Godfrey is reluctant to welcome Lily, admitting that he tried to locate her in Harlem when he first came to New York City. Lily regrets not being there when her sister passed away. But she made a promise to Ernestine and Ermina's grandmother that she would take care of Godfrey's daughters so she plans to stay with but Godfrey doesn't seem too pleased about this. Lily, who is bold and a free thinker, teases him for becoming very religious. She enjoys drinking alcohol, listening to jazz music, and dancing. Godfrey attempts to end the uneasy conversation when she brings up their past hinting that they used to get drunk and be passionate with each other in bars after he states that alcohol is not allowed in the house. In the following weeks, Ernestine starts working on her graduation dress, often conversing with Lily, a member of the Communist Party, who informs about an upcoming cultural revolution and equality, which influences Ernestine, prompting her to pen a school essay about the labor movement. This results in Godfrey getting admonished by the school principal on his daughter being instilled with communist ideals. 
Godfrey is upset that because of Lily, everyone now thinks he's a communist, including his co-workers who no longer talk to him. Lily, though, claims she didn't instill Ernestine anything as Ernestine is just beginning to observe the world with a critical eye. One morning, the Crumps get ready to go to the Peace Mission building to get everything ready for Father Divine's upcoming visit for the Holy Communion Banquet. Without Lily because she's hung over from a night of dancing with a Cuban man. Lily talks about her night and even shows Ernestine how to do the mambo but an upset Godfrey criticizes her for drinking. Lily brushes it off and starts reminding him how he used to touch her thigh when he was drunk so Godfrey frantically gets his daughters out of the room. Lily questions Godfrey if he wants her to say sorry and offers to apologize if that's what he desires. Then she kisses him and he briefly gives in before pulling away. After stepping back, he states for Lily to live in his house, she must respect his rules. Before he found the peace mission movement, the only way he could cope with his grief was by drinking but the teachings of Father Divine helped him change for the better. Though, he struggles with temptation in Lily's presence with a whiff of sweat and alcohol before abruptly leaving the apartment. After several days, he returns with a new wife named Jert Schult, a white German woman. Jert, yearning for acceptance, is an immigrant who shifted to America after World War II. They met on the subway when she was lost. They connected with each other and got married. His daughters are shocked and disappointed that their father remarried before their mother had not been dead for even a whole year. What's even more surprising is that their father married a white woman, but this isn't entirely unexpected given Godfrey's admiration for Father Divine, who also married a white woman. Lily is hurt that Godfrey married someone else without considering her, but she continues to lodge in their home, despite disliking Jert. On the day of the Holy Communion Banquet the Crumps prepared a large amount of food in expectation of Father Divine's arrival at the peace mission but he didn't show up due to apparently having a flat tire in New Jersey. Ermina suggests that if he were truly God, he could in some way get to the peace mission but Godfrey dismisses her telling her to be patient. When it becomes evident to everyone, including Godfrey, that Father Divine won't be coming, he expresses frustration about all the unanswered questions he has for him. He feels that he needs Father Divine's answers to move on with his life. In the following weeks, Ernestine keeps working on her graduation dress, but she and Ermina still don't feel comfortable around Jert, who's trying hard to connect with them. One day, as Ernestine sews her dress in Jert Slice's cabbage, Lily staggers in, clearly drunk, and starts a squabble with Jert. Jert states that Lily hasn't been going to the Communist Party's headquarters but only drinking and partying. Lily, in turn, disapproves Jert's perspective, suggesting that she doesn't understand the challenges of being black in the United States. Jert claimed that she doesn't see race, but Lily, Ernestine, and Ermina all chime in that only someone who hasn't experienced racism would believe in, making the distraught Jert leave the room. However, the argument frustrates Lily, who disparages Ernestine's dress lace which Ermina had stolen. Miffed by the reproach, Ernestine tears the lace off the dress. On the subway a group of white racists insulted and hit Godfrey on the head with a coke bottle. Now back in the apartment, Jert stops Godfrey from going back outside to confront his attackers. Jert is shocked but everyone else knows that an interracial relationship is sadly risky in 1950s America. Lily supports Ernestine when she blames Jert. Godfrey argues back, criticizing Lily's progressive opinions, but she declares that this incident illustrates everything that is flawed in the United States. A black man is injured because he's married to a white woman, who sits beside him, unharmed. The argument ends with Godfrey telling Lily that she needs to leave for the sake of his marriage to Jert. The play ends with Ernestine speaking directly to the audience, explaining that she graduates high school and goes to Harlem to find Lily. Unable to locate her, she asks around and is directed to City College. Ernestine enrolls, graduates, and becomes a civil rights activist. Ermina, on the other hand, has a baby before Ernestine finishes college. She's the one who ultimately identifies Lily's body and learns that their aunt died due to drug abuse. Meanwhile, Godfrey remains married to Jerd in Brooklyn. Crumbs on the Table of Joy is set in the 1950s, a period marked by racial segregation and discrimination in the United States. The characters in the play, particularly the African-American family of Godfrey and his daughters, Ernestine and Ermina, grapple with issues related to their racial identity and the discrimination they face. For instance, when Godfrey was physically attacked on the subway for having an interracial marriage by marrying a white woman, 
Ernestine and Ermina face bullying in school due to their attire and racial identity. Lily fights back racism by wearing fashionable clothing unlike the customary black women's attire. The play is set against the backdrop of significant socio-political change, including the Red Scare and just before the civil rights movement. Lily's involvement with socialist and communist ideas reflects the era's political tensions. Cultural clash is evident when Jert, a German white woman, marries an African-American Godfrey, enters the Crumb family's lives. Her presence challenges the family's traditional values and beliefs, highlighting the clash between different cultural backgrounds and worldviews. Grief and healing are significant themes in Crumb's On the Table of Joy. The Crump family is still mourning the loss of their mother, and each character copes with this grief in their own way. Ernestine, for example, turns to watching movies and focuses on sewing her graduation dress as a way to process her emotions. In the prologue, she describes how grief of a loved one emotionally crippled her father and that grief wouldn't let them be. Her emotionally charged reaction to her father's marriage to Jert, stating that he married less than a year after her mother being dead, suggests that she is still deeply grieving the loss. Inspired by her Aunt Lily and experiences of racial tensions and economic troubles, Ernestine decides to engage in socialist and revolutionary movements to bring socio-political changes. To cope with the loss of his wife, Godfrey devotes himself to the peace mission and earnestly tries to follow Father Divine by uprooting his life from the South to shift in New York City. To overcome the loss of his wife, he emotionally trades mourning with religious devotion. He obsessively writes everything in his notebooks to the point that his closets fill with years' worth of notepads and he hopes that his questions would be answered by Father Divine.